Hey there, Karen from ediblewildfood.com here. And I'm out on this rainy Sunday afternoon checking out one of my other favorite places to forage. I found some avens that are popping through. Whether this will be the white flower or the yellow, I don't know, but it's nice to see it. And of course, my dog Chance is out helping me, <laughs> or he's actually helping to break down the wood in the forest. So we're gonna go along here a little bit. There's not a whole heck of a lot on this side of the creek, but as you can see, this is really mucky. Lots of strawberry leaves here. In fact, no shortage of them. One of the reasons why I like coming to this specific area is because come early May, I will be here gathering some fiddleheads. This and other fronds here, here we go, see? There's your indication that this is ostrich fern territory. And let's see if I can find one that's not covered in moss, but for now, what will happen at the top of these, they will, you'll see the tiny fronds <laughs> peeking through. But this won't be for probably at least another month. But for those who like to gather fiddleheads, this location is absolutely great. It's near a creek. It's under the canopy of hardwood trees, but not enough so that it's being denied sunlight. Well, when there is sunshine. Anyway, like I say, it's always nice coming out on a rainy day anyways. So let's keep going this way. And I see a dandelion, a mighty dandelion. Those are always a welcome sight for sore eyes. What I'm going to do is cross over the creek, which is way over there, and find other edibles. But before I do, if you're out and about and you see a bush that looks like this, and you like autumn olives, this is your indication to come back in, the, in September to gather your autumn olives. Okay, Chance, let's go back over the creek. Which has swollen a fair bit because of the rain. Go on, go Chance, go on, come on. <laughs> go, go, go. Good boy, go. What's that? Go get it. Go Chance. Looks like he's a big chicken. Go see. <laughs> come on, let's go. I knew he would. I send him first and I know how deep the water is. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to turn my, my uh, camera off here because I don't want to take a chance at dropping this in the water. More dandelion. And as we continue this way, check out all the teasel. This is a plant that is recognized more in terms of using it medicinally. Although you can eat it, I would recommend only very, very small portions at a time. Always remember, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing too. In any case, the roots 
of teasel are used to make a tincture. And this has been known to help some people who have Lyme disease. There's more Avens here. And actually more Avens again. And of course, what's a video without you know who? Garlic mustard. I know many people don't like this because of how enthusiastic it enjoys growing. However, think about this. We're coming into times in which there could be disruptions to our food chains and supply chains altogether. This is predicted to be happening later this year. So having knowledge of where garlic mustard grows is a surefire way of being guaranteed some food. And of course, thistle. This will be the noting thistle or the bull thistle. Edible, not like this, it sure isn't. But those roots are, and they're highly medicinal. They're great for our liver health. Okay. More avens. More dandelion. So I'm going to start heading out of this area and I will tag on another video when I get to the top of the ridge over there to show you what else I have found this afternoon. I'm at the top of the ridge here and I'm also going to be battling some wind sounds and of course the traffic now. So I'm going to end this off with three more plants the red clover actually where I parked my car there's tons of it and I know this is red clover because it has the chevron marking I think yeah right there you can see the chevron marking on the leaves and look at that okay, let's see if I can clear it a little here beautiful beautiful mullen leaves Mullen isn't something you want to eat. You make a tea out of it, more specifically if you have a cough, a bronchial cough in particular. And last but not least, there's no shortage here of Queen Anne's Lace or Wild Carrot. This can be a very tricky plant to properly identify in the springtime so unless you are 100 sure do not eat this you could end up making a very bad mistake but for more information on the queen anne's lace i do sell pdf magazines on my store page and i have one of the queen anne's lace as well as other plants and i sell them for five dollars each Okay, and here's Chance, and he's saying he's had enough. Right, Chance? Have you had enough? You want to go for a car ride? There we go. <laughs> Chance and I want to thank you very much for watching, and I truly appreciate your support. Nothing else in here before I sign off. Nope, just more clover and more mullein. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell so you get notifications of new videos. Again, thank you for all your support. It truly is appreciated. And Chance appreciates it too.